Okay, this is going to be a quick video explaining my hypothesis of adjacent causality, which I've posted a picture of on Facebook. You, you see that picture diagram depicted right here. Um, I'll just explain the very brief summary of the operating points and not go into a lot of detail because the batteries tend to die on this camera very quickly. In fact, I just recorded a previous version of this uh, little video and the batteries died on me in the middle of it so what are you gonna do you know family dollar batteries anyway what we have here is a depiction of the multiverse the multiverse as you know is uh, comes from the Everett interpretation of quantum mechanics it uh, posits that we have a near infinite and or infinite number of parallel universes which uh, are created each time an event occurs in the present moment branching off into parallel universes determined by uh, the causal factors of that event uh, <clears throat> of course it's the overall multiverse is deterministic it's all determined because every outcome plays itself out but from our perspective there's the appearance of some variability because we our consciousness is proceeding forward into uh, whichever is the most probable multiverse for it to inhabit which is what I'm going to explain here <clears throat> so we have uh, the multiverse itself is a quantum computer or is functionally a quantum computer we can think of it as that it's difficult to prove that that's the case at this point I think it will be shown that that's the case eventually um, <clears throat> and then what we have is here we have a uh, retro causation which means that causality comes from the future not the past this is an important point most people think of causality as originating from the past, going this way, no, 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 blomp, right to the present moment, and then forward into the future in any number of directions, what they call, scientists call this a light cone. They see the future going out in these possible directions, limited by the laws of probability on this side and on this side. So the future, in their view, is expanding outward like this. What's really happening, in my opinion, is the opposite. The future is coming from this direction. It's coming from what we think of as the future. Causality is coming from the future. It's going, no, 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 no. Yeah, Batman. And it's uh, impacting the now, the present moment, right at this point, and then expanding out backwards in time, retrocausally, that's why we call it that, into what I call the dark cone. Yeah, light cone, dark cone. I just made that up. In fact, I just made all of this up. But that's not the point. These squares here, as you can see, I have nine squares depicted. I have a central square, which is, depicts the present moment, and then I have four squares, which are bold. They are the, they indicate the past, which is already fixed, or somewhat fixed. We'll, we'll get to that. But then we have the three other bolded squares, which are our three mathematically closest parallel universes. Okay, this mathematically close parallel universe is our most probable universe. It's what I call our forward direction universe. It's our drift universe. If we take no other action, we will drift automatically into this future universe. This will be our, our future, okay? There's a high probability of occurrence for this universe, F1, okay? Now, universe F2 is our up direction universe okay i call it up direction universe because i can't think of a better term for it i'm not a scientist i have no scientific training i don't uh, think of these things in a think tank i think of them while i'm sitting on the toilet so this is our up universe our up universe is also ma mathematically close it is a mathematically close parallel universe However, it has a reduced probability of occurrence because it's not in our natural direction of drift. Okay, we can see our direction of drift here is indicated by entropy, time. Entropy is actually a measure of the amount of information being generated in the quantum mechanical computational universe. In other words, the entire overall data set. As the uh, universe performs computations, which is what it does since it's a quantum computer, it generates an 
increasingly large uh, base of information, an increasingly large database. It's just like if you were to run a program uh, on your computer to type random uh, characters I into the hard drive and then set it to run automatically, it would eventually consume the entire hard drive with random characters. And that's pretty much what's happening in, in terms of entropy expanding the database of the universe, which we think of, which is it creates the arrow of time for one thing and which we also think of as disorder and the reason we think of it as disorder is because it creates a much va more vast range of possibilities than the initial conditions the initial conditions are always more ordered it's a smaller data set as the data set gets bigger there's more possibilities therefore more what we would call chaos complexity that kind of thing yabba yabba dabba do you all can figure this out okay so Again, a universe, parallel universe F3 here is similar to parallel universe F2, but it's what I call our down universe. And this is basically equivalent to what we would call positive and negative outcomes. Our positive outcomes would be located in parallel universe F2. Okay, that, that's our up universe. This is a good thing. When in parallel universe F2, everything is just like this. Whoops, I need to pull the headphone plug out, don't I? Joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, joy. Ah, well, you get the idea. Okay, similarly, in our down universe, which is universe F3, our next mathematically closest uh, universe in the downward direction, or in the negative direction, negative polarity, because everything in the universe is composed of either a positive or a negative polarity, as anybody who knows anything about electromagnetism can tell you. This is our bad universe. This is not such a nice place. Everything here is more like this. What? Oh, no. Okay. So, <clears throat> the trick here is that all of these three future universes are drift universe, the, the direction we're naturally drifting, universe F1 right here, universe F2 which is our happy happy joy joy universe, and universe F3 which is our oh no universe are all um, affecting our lives currently because we are entangled with our future selves. We are entangled with our future selves, okay? This is a matter of quantum entanglement. Uh, we're not only entangled with our future self in only one single direction, we're entangled with our future self in all of these parallel universes in the entire multiverse. But of course, as you get further away from these mathematically close parallel universes, these further away universes have such a low statistical probability of occurrence that they really don't make much difference. They only influence the ones adjacent to them, and therefore only... in. Uh, <clears throat> They therefore only uh, place an extremely small amount of influence on our current present moment. Okay, the most important influences are these adjacent universes, these immediately adjacent universes right here, which in particular is our drift universe. That's our natural future. That's where we're going if we just don't do anything. If we just sit and don't row the boat and go, go gently down the stream or whatever without rowing the boat will end up here in this universe. Now, <clears throat> there, we are also being influenced though by these two other universes. We also have this positive future universe influencing us and we have this negative future universe influencing us as well as our drift universe here. So, you could say that the only reason we have any conscious existence in the present moment is because we are an amalgamation of all of these alternative selves existing in these parallel universes. I think Joe Pesci puts it a little better than I do. Get this through your head, you Jew motherfucker, you! You only exist out here because of me! Now, obviously, he's from our uh, negative F3 universe here, but <laughs> you get the point. It's because of these other selves that we experience this sense of presence in, in the now. We, the Buddhists call this dependent origination. Uh, they, you know, it's not exactly what dependent origination is, but it's a similar concept.
So now we have the variable. Where is the variable in this? Well, the variable is attention and awareness. Okay? So wherever we place our attention and awareness is going to increase the probability that we find our conscious mind inhabiting that particular universe. Okay? Or being influenced by that particular in, uh, universe. Uh, if we place our conscious attention and awareness on, let's say, the negative universe, if we're always thinking about the, the worst possible outcome, you know, then it's going to influence the direction that our present awareness is going to take into the future future spectrum into the choice of universes in which we inhabit because again like I said everything in the multiverse is ultimately determined because every outcome plays out the only choice we actually have is where we are going to find and locate our own attention and awareness and if we're finding and locating it particularly here in the negative universe the type of outcome we're going to have again is this type of what? Oh, no. The oh no outcome so this is not good but if we focus our attention and awareness primarily in the present moment direction or the the drift direction I'm sorry the direction taken by entropy and time uh, that's really not gonna that, that's the way most people live their lives they're not thinking about anything uh, you know particularly substantial other than how to you know get from the next paycheck to the next paycheck get the bills paid, food on the table, blah, 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 blah. They're just focusing all their attention in this drift direction, which, hey, is great because they're, you know, increasing their probability of going into this neutral universe by to, to almost 100%. But if we focus our awareness and intention here up on universe F2, which is our up universe or a positive universe, then we increase the probability each time we do this we increase the probability that our uh, conscious awareness is going to become consistent with this parallel reality what do I mean become consistent with well it's we're going to become more and more influenced by this parallel reality for one thing and less and less influenced by this bad one down here and also by we're going to become somewhat less influenced by the drift direction as well. We're going to become focused. And in, in Buddhism, there's a saying called, your focus determines your reality. So, <clears throat> that's also in Star Wars. Yeah, Qui-Gon Jinn. Uh, if we focus here on this universe, we're increasing the probability that our conscious awareness in the present moment will inhabit it, and we're increasing the probability that it will influence us in the now which creates a feedback loop. If this feedback loop drastically increases the probability which I have written out as an equation here uh, <clears throat> that our future will resemble the future in this universe this positive up universe. Okay, I'm ta just taking for granted that most people would like to inhabit a, a better universe than they currently inhabit. Of course, this can work any way you want it to. If you really want to in inhabit a hellish universe that really sucks, you can do this the, the opposite way too, and purposely just think of anything negative that you can think of, and your probability of inhabiting your negative or downward F3 universe will increase as well, in the same way that it in in increases in this that I just demonstrated. You can do this, it's reversible. But why anybody would re want to reverse it, I don't know, unless they're crazy. But obviously I'm crazy because I'm saying all of this, but that's beside the point. Now, I think I've explained how all that works. Any questions? No. Nope. No questions, okay. She didn't listen to anything I just said, but still no questions. Very good. That brings this video to an end. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask me via Facebook or my um, inpatient address at the local state hospital. Thank you very much.